Right, one socket set. We need the uh, 14 mil next. 14 mil socket, there we go. Could use a long reach socket if you want, but I actually find it's better just to use an ordinary one. This is a Parkside socket set from Lidl's, which is actually um, pretty damn good. Probably one of the best ones I've uh, ever owned. It's not got much in the way of small sockets, but I've got socket sets for small sockets anyway. Let's just cheat and spin the crank. What's that? What the hell? Keep hold of those bolts and we'll put those on here. Now we need the crank extractor tool, which is just one of these. And yes, they can, on the rare occasion, come in different sizes, but for the most part, they're all the same size and they should just screw in like that. Screwed in really nicely, actually. Um, I think that's a 16. My other one's a 15 mil. Or you can put a big ass. I think it's an 8 mil hex key in the end if you've got one. Make sure that's done up tight. It goes in there like that. And then, in theory, that should pull off just like that. Unfortunately, they're not all they're not all that easy to remove. <laughs> if I got lucky with this one, Ooh, just use a spanner to unscrew it. The other method is, if you haven't got that, to use a hammer, but I wouldn't recommend it because this is that plastic coated metal arm. This plastic will just shatter straight away. It's okay using a hammer if it's a crank set that you don't, you know, give a rat's ass about. You can actually bought a brand new one and yours is knackered, so. You know, you can. What is that in there? It looks like there's something stuck in there. Like a washer. I can see the thread in there. Is that a washer or is that part of the crank? I don't know, but I might actually um, have to do that the old fashioned way. Um, but what I do, if I do have to use a hammer, like I'm going to have to on that if I want to take it off, or I could just leave it on there. What I would do is lay it on the floor with that bit out like that and just give it one good hard whack as close as I can get it to there. And that should, I'm hoping, it will just fly off and it won't damage the uh, crank too much. I've got a little play in there. I mean, I have got a hammer up here. Well, I don't think that's going to be um, heavy enough for this. Um, shows what I know then, doesn't it? <laughs> I just tapped it off. <clears throat> yeah, usually they can be a pain in the backside, but uh, apparently not today. It came off <laughs> a lot easier than I was bargaining on. Um, yeah, that caught me off guard. Not that that's a bad thing. I'm going to put that ratchet back up here. Right. Um, when I'm dismantling the bike, I usually leave the wheels until last as well. What do I need next? Oh, flathead screw. What did I throw? <laughs> you can get a proper tool for these lock rings as well, but that's all you got to do. If you haven't got it, flat screwdriver, just tap it round. You see, 
Yeah, someone's painted that as well. I might change that if I've if I've got one that hasn't been painted. In fact, it's one I made earlier. <laughs> That's for another bike that I'm trying to get this exact same thing out of. And the only reason I'm taking it off is because uh, I can <laughs> I can tell that the bearings need attention. So I may not actually get to finish this until next week. I'm going to need, I'm going to need some parts. Oh, brilliant. This one's unscrewing. It will not unscrew on the other bike I've got. Really will not unscrew. Bearings could actually be fine. Maybe they took all of this off for painting. Maybe I'm wrong. rather take it apart now and check it and put it all back together and find that it's totally naff. So this cup unscrews. I have got a wrench for the other side but normally you don't have to worry about that unless you're changing the whole style of your bottom bracket. Because this one uses uh, caged bearings. You can get sealed bottom brackets and semi-sealed bottom brackets which is basically where one side's sealed and one side isn't. And I'm just having little bits fall out of there and dirt. Uh, bearings are actually okay. They are just full of crap though. So I've got a feeling. I don't know, I may replace those. They're not expensive to buy. In fairness, I'll probably be better off now that I've got it apart. A few quid for a new set wouldn't be a bad thing. Which is kind of going against what I said earlier. I said I was not going to put any brand new parts on this, but sometimes you've got to make an exception. Just going to crack in there and get that out. Right. Now we can flip it over and start dismantling everything else. Including the chain. The chain's going to come off. I'm not replacing the chain or anything. That's all perfectly fine. Even this looks brand new. Um, I am going to need a sharp object. So I'm not reusing these handlebar grips, so I'm just going to cut them off. Like that. And this grip shift is no good either, that's broken. Should actually get the brakes disconnected. Yeah, can't quite get enough slack on that. Is that an eight or a ten mil? It's like I might have to turn this light on as well. I might need to be flooded by lights so I can see what I'm doing. Why me hexagon keys? I can't remember where. I think I got this from Lidl's as well. The only thing that bugs me is it's held together with hexagon bolts. You know, a hexagon set held together with hexagon, hexagon bolts and they do come apart. <laughs> they do come loose. Which means you end up having to... Uh, um, use a hexagon key, or an anion key if you prefer, from another set just to tighten them all up again. I want to do a nice job. I don't know why. I want to do a nicer job on this. I was just going to build it up as a conker. You know, just replace like the broken shifter with something that worked and whatnot. But the more I've looked at it, the more I'm like, nah, you know what, I feel like doing a proper build, so. But I haven't got a workshop here to spray in. And it's not going to be the best paint job in the world. It's not going to be a professional paint job, so. 
I'm not going for professionalism. Just want to tidy up the frame and uh, rebuild it. I'm, I'm tempted to go for white forks. These are rusty, so we'll probably change those bolts. What do they need? I think. That'd be an 8mm. What have I got there? That's an 8 and a 9mm. Nope. No, nope, I was totally wrong. It's a 10. There we go. Someone went to the effort to put a um, little cable end on this to stop it from fraying. And on this bit, actually. I'm not sure why they opted. Um, such a pain he has to get off. Why they opted for um, cantilever instead of maybe that's all they had. They just needed a front brake. You know, sort of ran with what they got or what they had. Like that. Okay, just, yep, just pulls off. Unfortunately, you can't reuse the cable ends once they're used. a good set of cantilevers, so we'll probably keep hold of these. And if you're going to keep hold of brakes like this and, and V-brakes, you want to put a cable tie through this bit, otherwise you'll lose that spring. Ask me how I know that one. <coughs> I speak it from experience. Go, cable bridge. This is why I want to change the uh, handlebar stem as well. <laughs> I hate it when they do that, that's actually got stuck in there. There we go. Uh, I don't think I'll use that. I'm going to go down. I'll have a rubbish pile down there, I think. I want to keep this cable adjuster, because it is actually a good one. However, if the brake shifter, the brake shifter, the brake lever is not. The end of it is sn um, snapped off. for these. It's not often that happens either. Normally you can't get these bloody screws off for the love and the money. You may not need, actually I don't think I can use that front brake cable on this again. No point keeping this brake lever because <laughs> it's a pair. Where's my buttons? Right under there. Okay. Fold that one in, fold that one. Yeah, these are all coming loose again now that I'm using the brake. That's too big. These are 6mm. I don't think this is going to give me any grief either to take this off. Because sometimes, yeah, see, that's just fell through on its own. Yeah. Whoops. Better keep hold of the bike. 
Yeah, I just want to reuse the handlebar on this and see if I've got a different stem I can use. I like my handlebars quite high, so I'm not sure if I can find one with a longer reach on it. Okay, six away. I need five next again. That's what these are held on with. It's a five mil Allen bolt. And that one wasn't even tight. <laughs> okay. These are cheap, nasty um, V brakes as well, with like a budget type bike. I'm assuming um, that maybe someone just built this as a project, you know? Perhaps got given it and had a couple of bikes laying about, so technically built a conquer. I'm going to have to pause in a minute. <laughs> Um, so if I just get these brakes off first before I do that, we're going to need these brake pads. I will keep these V-brakes because these are actually good nick. I need four zip ties because I need to put them through this as well. If that spring had no, springs on the edge of dropping off on the other one. Do with the ten mil. That one. You just hate it when you can see the wrench that you want, but you just can't get a hold of it. I got it. Oh, that's the wrong one. Oh, here it is. Just need to disconnect the cable. Oh, there goes the spring as well. Right. Excuse me. Not intentional. Yeah, that's why I'm going to put a cable tie through them. Right. Just need to pause for a minute. I will be back. Back. Oh. Well, this turned really nasty now. Um, what should we do next? I think gear cable is going to have to come off next. Which means I'm going to need a 9mm and a hexagonal key. So, get this one off. I need my uh, X key set now. Look at it. It's a big red thing. How can I not see it? Quite easily with me, actually. Uh, it's probably staring me in the face somewhere, you know. I've got spares, isn't it? I can't remember, is that five? It's a five, so we'll undo that. Oh, in case you're wondering as well, that's got what they call a... Seriously? I've literally only just watched a um, video on that particular type of drainer. Well, I can't remember what it's called, but instead of its resting point being down here on your smallest gear, it's actually up here on the biggest gear.
I'm going to try and reuse the gear cable, at least the rear. Um, I didn't take the cables off before they painted this. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about that drainer because that works backwards to what I'm used to. I'm not going to reuse these either because they're the uh, ones with the narrower diameter four gear cables. I don't know why they bother doing that because the gear cables work perfectly well on the ones for brake cables. These are a cheap version of uh, grip shifts, but you can, believe it or not, change the cable. He says that should just pop off. Or I might be able to get it just by doing that. I should be honest, I'm all painted black. Do I really want to reuse that? I'll break my rule again and put a new cable. That is still a good grip shift though. See, because that drainer works backwards to what I'm used to, so does this grip shift apparently. I've got to remember that with the new ones, that seventh or number seven on the shift is actually going to be first. It's going to be number one. It's just going to be. Um, Ass backwards, that's all. Yeah, I'm just gonna use a new cable on it. That's one of the spike bits is. That one is brick cable. That one's gotta be the gear cable. The front gears. Uh, put that down there. Yeah, there's the ones for the brake cables. It's got a little bit of a wider diameter. I'm going to keep this, but I'm not going to keep the brake lever because I don't want to keep an odd one. I prefer to keep them in pairs if possible. I don't know. I mean, yeah, actually, see, I don't like this style of brake lever either. It looks plastic, and for the most part, it is. It's just like a thin metal reinforcement in there. And the problem is with these, when you brake, this flexes. So you lose a lot of your braking power because of that. That's why I don't like them. Cheap crap, basically. Right, we're actually uh, nearly there. Yeah, I might get away with that. You never know, I might be able to just steal wool some of this paint off these cables. under this to paint under it. It's got the white streak there from the original colour. It might still wool off if I'm lucky. But I'm not worried about it if it doesn't because I've got spares. Right. We need to split that chain next. Let me get that off. So we're going to need one of these tools. I hope this is the good one. <laughs> I've got a few of these and some of them ain't that good. 
just hook it on your chain like that and then just screw it in. Cool, he says. Use that as a bit of extra leverage. Oh, bloody hell. Might not be my best removal tool. Is there actually a master link in this chain? Because in fairness, this chain doesn't look that old. Which means... That it may have a master link somewhere. I just found a bit where I was just pushing on the pins. Now I'm not seeing a master link anyway, so let's give this one another crack, shall we? Maybe now that I've got it in a slightly better position. It says. It's not bloody chain at all, it is the tool. I don't know if I should be forced this. I might break this and I might have to wait until I can get what the other one from home, from the workshop. that too much in case uh, I can see it sticking through the other end so I don't know why this the thread on this is coming up thread into it slowly. I haven't got that many more threads to actually go on this. You know, before it's uh, screwed in all the way. two of these splitters here, but apparently I've only got the one now. Let's try a bit of this. See if we can uh, get that fixed. really shouldn't I? Into a pair of chant locks. 
like so. I'm going to use this like so because it's a longer wrench, so I've got a bit more leverage. torn with the idea of putting it in the bench vice on the computer desk because I can hold it. Right, let me just pause you for a bit and I'll see if I can uh, get this bloody thing working again. Righty, let's give this a go. Preferably where I start to uh, start to push that out. Good. Should be good enough there. Glad I've got this one fixed. Whoops. Okay. I did that on the wrong side of the chain. I should have done that on the other side, but never mind. One chain. bolt that holds this to the bike should also be a 9mm. I told you that was staring me in the face, let's find out the bloody tool tray. How the hell... Oh. It's not a bloody uh, thingy at all, it's a... Alan screw. So let's get Alan out again. Yep, yeah, I didn't take the drainers off either because there's a mark where this was. But I will reuse these. That's a short bit. Okay, we need the 5mm Alan again for this. Yeah, like so. Right. I'm going to take the seat post out and leave the seat on the post, I think. That would be the easiest way to do that. Uh, are you a 13? It's 14. All bikes came apart this easy. I'm going to change the uh, clamp bolt.
Yep. I've got quick release ones, so I might stick that on there. That was just the wheels. Oh, and the forks. So I'm going to need... Hopefully that big uh, chrome adjustable I had is going to open up far enough. Nope. <laughs> That's the biggest one I've actually got. Okay, the old fashioned way it is. Nicely greased as well. I'm just going to put that back on just so the bearings don't go everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Quick release uh, spindle was already loose. Well, I don't know if the inner tube was any good in that one. I've never pumped it up. Okay, final piece of the puzzle. Like that. So now that's good for a good clean down and a fresh lick of paint. I haven't got a rag in here, have I? Be right back again. Right, that's better. Nice clean hands. Shirt, not so much. So yeah, um, I will do a video of the reassembly of that bike once I've got all the frame um, sorted and whatnot. Uh, I may even just take that over to my mum's next time I'm over there and just give that a quick spray in the workshop. I think there might even be some black paint over there. I haven't got any here apart from the coloured lacquer. I haven't got any lacquer either now that I think about it. But I can get that next week. That's not a problem as long as I can get the paint on it. Um, yeah, so I probably won't film the painting because it's only just touching up what was missed and uh, um, just going over it once more with a coat of paint really. So, as I said earlier in the video, I've got an update on the mopeds. Well, I no longer own the Yamaha Jog. Um, a friend of mine, Kat, picked it up last Friday, so nearly a week ago. Bloody hell, time's flown. Um, so, yep, she now owns that. And my brown Honda Camino, 1980 Honda Camino, I sold to my brother last Friday as well, so that took me down to just two mopeds that I owned, neither of them worked. Instead of four, that didn't work. Well, technically the job did. I think it was just me being rather nitpicky. Anyway. Um, the good news is, I do have a new ped. There it is. Zoom you in on it. So there it is. It's an Aprilia Habana. 
It's 2002 125 four stroke. All in running working order. Um, rear brake needs a little bit of attention. And the count of the brake lever goes all the way down to the handlebar. Other than that, I've not found anything else wrong with it. Needs an MOT. Um, obviously tax, insurance, blah -de blah blah Before I can ride it, I'm not going to be able to do any of that uh, until next week, and not even the brake. So, that's just currently sat in the workshop over at Mum's, waiting for me to uh, basically have the funds for it. Uh, to get it on the road, that is. But yeah, got a 125. And everyone I've shown that to have said they like the colour of that. That is a nice burgundy colour. Sort of like a maroon burgundy colour. All the lights and everything works. It ran fine. So yeah, I'm not too worried about much of it. Even the forks and suspension look a lot better than the ones did on the jog. And that's a much older bike. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I think we're going to get rain again. Possibly another thunderstorm because it's getting really, really dark out there and that cloud is looking really horrible. Alright. Um, I suppose in the meantime I could actually get inner tubes and whatnot into these two wheels and get them ready to go back in. I don't think I've got any better quick release sp um, spindles and what's attached. I just want to double check. That is a seven speed on this, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, seven speed. Oh, it's a cassette. Not a freewheel. I can see some wear in the first, second, third, and fourth, but not so much fifth, sixth, and seventh. Nothing I'm worried about on that. That's good to go. I might even have a pair of tyres I can put on this because I don't want to put off-road mountain bike tyres on this one. But I have got is that a Schwab tyre? For a chance. Because this has got that reflective band around it. No, it's not Schwab. I think I have got a couple of Schwab tyres that may actually fit this. I don't know if it's meant to be that bald around the middle, is it? Let's get that tyre off. Yeah, there was an inner tube with this and the rim tape that protects the tube from the spokes. But yeah, when I got the bike. <laughs> it was all wrapped around this. It was just tightly wrapped around that as well. I'm just going to uh, Perfect. I mean the wheel doesn't look anything special to me. I can't see any special brand name or anything on it. Some black paint or something on the rim there. I don't think I've got any rim tape though, so I'll have to use an age-old trick of mine, which is to use electrical tape. And I go round at least twice. Never had an issue doing that. So there's a little cycle hack for you. If you haven't got a, a rim tape and you can't find one, use a bit of a electrical PVC tape and go round the wheel twice. I have got some up here. I've got yeah, it's over there. I've got two black and one red. The black rolls need using up, so I'll probably just use one of those on them. I've got inner tubes, which I'm pretty certain are holding air, down in the shed, so I can grab those as well. And just cut the tyres. And I'm next over at Mum's. I have no idea when that's going to be. Anyway. I'm going to end the video here guys, so thanks a lot for watching, I hope you liked the video, if you did, smash the like button, if you didn't, smash the dislike button, 
And of course, if you want to see more random videos like this one, click the subscribe button. It's free. Free entertainment. Not sure I'd qualify as entertainment, but you know what I mean. It doesn't cost her anything to watch someone. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just sort of thinking, why would anybody want to watch me? But, you know, I've still got, what, 720 odd subscribers. So, that being said, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!